Okay, so we're going to begin by looking at the planet Saturn, which is, of course, famous for its very prominent system of rings. You can actually see Saturn's rings through a telescope. It's a very prominent feature, and we're going to talk about uh, the rings of Saturn. We're going to talk about the planet itself, of course, and we'll talk about its moons and its place in the solar system. Now, when you look at Saturn in the night sky and you look at its rings, uh, they ch the orientation of the rings changes relative to us depending on where Saturn is and where Earth is in their respective orbits. And so when you look, uh, you can see uh, the rings may look dead on straight, they may look very thin to you, or you may kind of see at an angle and you can see more width. You can also see uh, this gap in the rings, that's called the Cassini division, we'll talk about that later, but... Uh, it's basically the the thing that makes Saturn one of the most distinctive planets in the solar system is that giant ring system. Like Jupiter, Saturn is a gas giant. It has a similar chemical composition. Um, there are some variations. We can see, uh, for example, the coloration is uh, more subdued. It doesn't have as much coloration as Jupiter does. Uh, and uh, the constituents helium there's a much lo much lower fraction of helium in the content of the atmosphere of Saturn than there is on Jupiter but otherwise in a lot of ways they're very similar here we have a true color image of Saturn and what that means when we say it's true colors if you were you know on a spaceship looking out the window at Saturn this is the color that you would see it's kind of you know bland looking in a certain way but those rings certainly make it startling to see. And of course we have uh, this standard plot that we've seen many times at this point um, with the pressure and the altitude as the vertical axes and the temperature as the horizontal axis. You can see this blue line of course is what represents the different values as you go to different levels. And just like we did with Jupiter we basically have to make a de decision where we call the zero and uh, because it, Saturn isn't a planet like the Earth and Mars where you can stand on the ground, but uh, the zero is defined above the troposphere, and as you go down, as you follow this blue line, you could go and you can say at an altitude of minus 200 kilometers, you can go over to the blue line and see that that's going to be about 200 Kelvin, um, and the pressure is going to be, you know, five or six, something like that. You can just find what you need to find if you're interested in uh, what's going on inside the interior of Saturn. Now here we have a false color image. Um, the false color image has uh, basically upped the contrast a little bit so that you can see the band structure. So we see that just like Jupiter, there are these different bands. You can't really see them as distinctly when you're looking at the actual image of Saturn because the colors all kind of blend together. But uh, this enhancement lets you see that. And you can also see that there are uh, different structures that can be seen in these bands. Here we see a plot of the uh, velocities of the different layers, the different bands. And just like on Jupiter, we see that Saturn has differential rotation. differential rotation. And what differential rotation means, again, is that if I'm looking at this particular band, say in the middle here, um, here is where it is zero velocity. If you look down on the graph at the bottom of the horizontal axis, you can see it's a zero velocity. And as I pick this band, for example, I can go over and I can see that that band is moving at about 1500 kilometers per hour to the right. But if I pick this band up here, I can see that here it's moving, you know, maybe 150, 200 kilometers per hour to the left because it's to the left of the zero. And so the fact that these different bands are moving at different speeds and different directions, that's what it means that we have differential rotation. This is the same kind of behavior we saw on Jupiter where the different bands in the atmosphere are moving at different speeds. And we also saw the great red spot on Jupiter, and we saw other storms that were shorter-lived on Jupiter. 
uh, we see similar features on Saturn, not something like the Great Red Spot, which has endured for centuries, but those same kind of storms that sort of come and go, uh, we see them on Saturn as well. So Saturn is another planet that has weather uh, that is something for scientists to uh, try to understand. So, for example, we see an image here. This was uh, a picture showing a rather huge storm uh, in the atmosphere of Saturn. Here we see the interior of Saturn. Uh, its structure is very similar to Jupiter's. Uh, as you go down, it gets more dense, and uh, the pressure gets very, very high. Now, there's another thing, another way that Saturn is similar to Jupiter. Uh, Saturn also radiates more energy into space, more, radi more energy gets radiated into space than it receives from the Sun. But this is uh, from a different mechanism from Jupiter. Um, basically, the helium and hydrogen in Saturn are not well mixed, and the helium tends to condense into droplets and fall. And as they fall, they condense. The gravity of Saturn is very strong, and it compresses them together and condenses them, and it creates a kind of a friction-type heating that heats up the interior of the planet. Another way that Saturn is similar to the Earth is that it has aurora. And uh, that's, as we know, that's an interaction of charged particles coming from the sun, interacting with the magnetic field of the planet, and interacting with uh, the atmosphere of the planet. And so uh, this is a good stopping point for this video. We'll continue our exploration of Saturn in the next video.